what's up y'all night the edge here again got a um another spider code video for you um this is a pretty special one this is a this is another usa made spider co um this is the yojimbo spider co yojimbo 2 this one actually is the knife center exclusive that was available um i don't know a while back i remember a year or so ago Smooth G10 handles, a little bit, a little bit smoother uh, texture on there than normal, and uh, CPM Crewwear blade on it. And uh, this is about the only one they haven't modded as far as scales and clip goes. But this is actually a heavily modded, a heavily modded one. Um, I'll show you guys why here in just a second. But um, the Spyderco Yojimbo was invented, um, designed by uh, Michael Janitz, who works for Spyderco, he wanted like a kind of aggressive Warncliffe shape uh, self-defense knife, and he came out with uh, he came out with the Yojimbo, and uh, this has since spawned some uh, a larger version and a smaller version out that's out now, I believe. Uh, the Micro Jimbo and the uh, Yojimbo is the the larger version of the Yojimbo knife, but this is made in the Colorado uh, plant, Spyderco plant. So this is one of the uh, last couple of uh, Spydercos that I have that are going to be on the USA leg of the tour. Um, but anyway, without further ado, that's uh, Spyderco Yojimbo 2 CPM Crewwear Blade. Now, one thing that you'll notice that's very different about this, if you know your Spydercos or you know, um, you know what the general profile looks like, of the Yojimbo is uh, this has uh, been a little bit modded. It's been chopped. Uh, Duty's Daggers, I'll tag them down in the description, but uh, Duty at Duty's Daggers actually uh, chopped the blade himself and modified it. You know, I, I told him I, I, I thought it would look cool, you know, if it went from like an aggressive Warren Cliff to almost kind of like a sheep's foot, you know, be a little more utilitarian. And I just thought it looked pretty cool. And he uh he brought it to fruition he he definitely uh he did a great job on it you know um there's no sharp edges up here where he chopped where he chopped it at you know it looks perfectly um perfect like it came from the factory like that pretty much looks great and i really like the uh the kind of no worn cliff you know end of it it makes it a lot more utilitarian to me um you know, uh, you don't have to worry about that tip breaking off quite as much because uh, with the original, it was just like a straight down aggressive tip. And uh, there's, there's been a lot of people that have um, that I've seen that have had issues with the tip breaking off. Um, but yeah, I thought that would was pretty cool. But anyway, uh, this is the Spyderco Geo Jimbo 2. And uh, go ahead and get into the measurements or anything. Now, like I said, it, it is modded. The blade's modded. So you know, the weight's going to be a little less and the overall length, I think, will probably be a little bit less than what it normally calls for. But, you know, this will give you a rough idea of what you're dealing with if you decide to get one or not. And it also, it's more along the lines of the size of the micro jimbo, I think. Um, so total overall, if you go from the tip of the blade you know again it's modded but if you go from the tip of the blade to the end of the handle it's seven inches um handle length on it sitting right at four inches um blade length now with it modded is right at three inches with the cutting edge being right at uh, i want to say two and five eighths on the cutting edge on that um you know that's after the modifications again but yeah, it's got a pretty good hollow grind on it, um, you know, flat here, swedges down here. So we'll go ahead and do the uh, do the calipers here, see what our blade stock thickness is on it. Sitting right at uh thickest part of the spine, you're sitting right at 148 thousandths right there, 144. Yeah, so 148 thousandths is going to be like your thicker part, um, you know, blade stock. Going all the way down towards the edge, 21 thousandths, 20 and a half thousandths. So it does taper down to a pretty thin edge going down towards the bottom of it. The handle, and these are the Smooth G10. I'm not sure. Um, 
what it's like compared to the regular G10 that comes with it. But this is a smooth G10 handles from Night Center. Uh, you're looking at uh, four four hundred point four four of an inch. You know that's not bad. Um, you know it's not especially narrow, not especially wide. So nothing wrong there. You know I don't think. Um, go ahead and uh, let's see. We'll do a size comparisons on it. This is uh, Microtech stitch, so you can see the stitch is a lot bigger than the Yojimbo two. That's the uh, Demco knives, or uh, yeah, Demco 80 20.5, you know, right right around the size of that. Demco uh, 20.5 is a little bit longer, you know, towards the end, but uh, yeah, and with that chop, it's uh, kind of a similar, you know, blade shape too, between those two. And let's see, we'll do the uh, Doug Ritter, Ritter Hogue RSK MK1. And the uh, Hogue Deca. Hogue Deca, just a hair longer than the, uh, than the Yojimbo 2. Maybe actually more than a hair, maybe about a quarter of an inch longer overall. But um, those, uh, <clears throat> let's see, you got your Spider Co. Paramilitary 2, Spider Co. Para 3. All right, so looking at the pair of three compared to the Yojimbo, right at the same uh, overall. Actually, the pair of three is going to be a little bit longer. Not by much, but uh, just a little bit longer. And even with the modification, I'd say the Yojimbo still has uh, a little more cutting edge than the, than the pair of three. Um, not as much cutting edge as the pair of two, the pair of military two, but more than the pair of three. And uh, let's see what else. We get another Spider Co out right here. That's the Spider Co Shaman, right? So Shaman's definitely a lot bigger than the uh, than the Yojimbo. So that gives you kind of an idea of the length and the the size of it. Um, and put those up. Go ahead and do. Uh, let me get the scale out. Do weight. Now, like I said earlier, this is chopped, and uh, it does have the uh, the <clears throat> smooth G10 on the scales, you know, so I don't know if that makes a difference with the scales. I know with it being chopped, it does make a little bit of a difference um, as far as weight goes, but uh, we'll put it on the scale, just weigh it, 3.9 ounces. So 3.9, it's a little over the ounce and inch ratio. It's not too bad. Um, you know, it's not like way over. It's not extremely heavy. To me, honestly, like it really makes no difference. It's not a, uh, it's not a significant weight, you know, at all. It's not something that's troublesome or, or anything like that. Um, go ahead and get the jeans out. Pocket check on this thing. Uh, this is the stock clip. So stock clip, your Jimbo, you're looking at not that much sticking out. Um, it's a little bit sticking out, you know, it's, it's visible, you know, but it's not, uh, it's not too, too bad. I don't think, and I think this actually, one of the reasons, uh, that they did this is actually that, um, I believe Michael Janet's when he was talking about it, um, was saying that, that this this little extra right here you know kind of gives you a little bit of an advantage pulling it out of the pocket faster you know and i could i could definitely tell that that's you know that that is uh the case so um no big deal right there with the with the excess showing you know and it's for a good reason so we'll go ahead and do hardware check on this thing we got a t8 right here flip it around so you guys can see t8 body screws are t8 uh, i think that's a t10 on the pivot i'll get the t10 out just to double check yeah pivot's gonna be a t10 yeah t10 on the pivot pocket clip screws almost positive those are t6s no Pocket clip screws are T8. That's good. 
That's really good. Um, as far as the hardware and everything goes, the only bad side about it is, uh, you know, the pivot's not captive. So, uh, that, that could be a uh, definite improvement, you know. But uh, other than that, T8 hardware all the way around and the T10 pivot, that's pretty good. So, we'll get into, uh, I guess I'll go ahead and do my final thoughts on this knife now this thing is it's extraordinarily it's, it's a hollow grind but like i showed you earlier that goes down to a really thin blade stock i get a piece of paper here it's foam book paper now the old new orleans yellow pages here all right so this thing even as hollow of a grind you know is as uh, thick a stock as you're looking at it's not uh it is pretty slicey, you know. So, I actually need to touch it up towards the end there. You can tell it's not uh, it's not really biting like it's supposed to be, but it will definitely a hundred percent slice. Um, let's see here. Yeah, it, it'll it'll slice pretty good. Foam book paper is a little harder just because of uh, it being so thin. So you're gonna slice tissue or paper towel or foam book paper. You gotta be pretty confident in that edge, and it's not a bad edge on it at all. Just need to uh, maybe strop it a little bit, fix that. But it is incredibly sharp. Uh, the ergonomics on this guy are, are awesome. I think for my size hands, I wear a large size glove. Um, have my average size hands, I guess you could say. So the ergonomics on it to me are, are pretty good. You know, I mean, my pinky's back here whenever you're choked back and choked up, definitely plenty of room. You can kind of get on this flat right here. That's on the bottom when you're choked up and the ridge right there is, you know, it's pretty comfortable too for some close up work and stuff like that. You can pinch cut it pretty good like that. You know, if you want to do draw cuts, that's a good thing. Um, this knife is designed for self-defense, you know, so holding it in reverse grip, you know, is pretty comfortable, you know. I mean, there's no hot spots. The clip doesn't create a hot spot or anything like that, I don't think. Um, the action on it's really good. It, it's riding on, I got the pivot a little tight right now, but it's riding on the uh, phosphor bronze washers, which is a good thing. Um that uh, keeps it from keeps uh, dirt and stuff out a little better than than uh, a ceramic ball. Uh, shoot, what am I saying? Uh, ball bearings, you know. So that's a good thing too. And I have no issue on the, the action's a little stiff, you know. Be honest, like compared to like a paramilitary two or a pair of three, but um, I have no issue whatsoever with it. And uh, there's no blade play, lock up, solid, you know, left down, upper right. Uh, centering on it, it's pretty dead on. The deployment method is great. It feels good whenever you're, you know, doing the middle finger flick, opening it like that. Um, spidey flick, you know, works really good on it. Thumb, thumb open works good on it, you know, so no issues there at all. It's a pretty comfortable knife, and the Smooth G10 really feels nice. Uh, I like it. A little bit better than their, their regular G10. And uh, the blade is a uh, crew wear blade. I think I mentioned that at the beginning. But crew wear is a pretty good steel. It'll, you know, I don't think it's a stainless. But it, I don't think it, it rusts as much as like a 15V or uh, something like that. I haven't had any issues with it. Um, with my knives, I, I take some uh, knife shield. You know, most of the time, as soon as I get them, you know, in this uh, KPL knife shield, that stuff works really good with uh, with coating and stuff, you know, to kind of help prevent rust a little bit. But I haven't had an issue with it. And this thing, I've cut a lot of stuff with this thing. I've cut a lot of rope and rubber and stuff like that. And it, is, uh, it has been good to go, you know. Crew wear is, uh, is definitely a, a pretty good steel, in my opinion. It's a, it's a super steel. So... Anyway, that is, oh, also a uh, pocket clip. I know we went over carry, but uh, this is reversible and ambidextrous, right? So you can mount it T8 
tip up, tip down, uh, right-handed or left-handed carry. So that's another good thing about it. I'd say overall, I would rank this knife, you know, probably about a 93. You know, it, it's not very many bad things about it. Um, you know, I did have the modification done because I didn't really care for that. Uh, after I got it in hand, I didn't really care for that super aggressive worn clip tip. I, I like the way it looked. But I didn't, uh, I didn't want to carry it every day like that because I was kind of afraid if I dropped it or, you know, if I was cutting something and it pulled back or something like that, it would be a lot more uh, easy to break that tip off. So, uh, Duty's Daggers, uh, Kevin from Duty's Daggers did really good chopping this thing up for me. And uh, like I said before, I'll, I'll include him down below definitely in the, in the description. So... And that's about it, guys. That is the Spyderco Yojimbo 2 um, pocket knife modded, chopped by Duty's Daggers. USA Spyderco. And I really appreciate you guys watching. And until, until then, I'll see you on the next one. Have a good one.